Religion is an insult to human dignity. Without it, you would have good people doing good things and evil people doing evil things. But for good people to do evil things, that takes religion. All logical arguments can be defeated by the simple refusal to reason logically. The effort to understand the universe is one of the very few things that lifts human life a little above the level of farce and gives it some of the grace of tragedy. The progress of science has been largely a matter of discovering what questions should be asked. It is not only in medicine that persons in authority will resist any investigation that might reduce their authority. The more the universe seems comprehensible, the more it also seems pointless. One of the great achievements of science has been, if not to make it impossible for intelligent people to be religious, then at least to make it possible for them not to be religious. We should not retreat from this accomplishment. I don't need to argue here that the evil in the world proves that the universe is not designed, but only that there are no signs of benevolence that might have shown the hand of a designer. It used to be obvious that the world was designed by some sort of intelligence. What else could account for fire and rain and lightning and earthquakes? Above all, the wonderful abilities of living things seemed to point to a creator who had a special interest in life. Today, we understand most of these things in terms of physical forces acting under impersonal laws. We don't yet know the most fundamental laws, and we can't work out all the consequences of the laws we do know. The human mind remains extraordinarily difficult to understand, but so is the weather. We can't predict whether it will rain one month from today but we do know the rules that govern the rain, even though we can't always calculate their consequences. I see nothing about the human mind any more than about the weather that stands out as beyond the hope of understanding as a consequence of impersonal laws acting over billions of years. It does not matter whether you win or lose, what matters is whether I win or lose. Einstein occasionally used God as a metaphor for the unknown fundamental laws of nature. Religions of the Roman Empire were all considered by the people as equally true, by the philosopher as equally false, and by the magistrate as equally useful. Many people do simply awful things out of sincere religious belief, not using religion as a cover the way that Saddam Hussein may have done, but really because they believe that this is what God wants them to do. Going all the way back to Abraham, being willing to sacrifice Isaac because God told him to do that. Putting God ahead of humanity is a terrible thing. Whatever the final laws of nature may be, there is no reason to suppose that they are designed to make physicists happy. There is a spooky quality about the ability of mathematicians to get there ahead of physicists. It's as if when Neil Armstrong first landed on the moon, he found in the lunar dust the footsteps of Jules Verne. As is natural for an academic, when I want to learn about something, I volunteer to teach a course on the subject. 
There are those whose views about religion are not very different from my own, but who nevertheless feel that we should try to damp down the conflict, that we should compromise it. I respect their views, and I understand their motives, and I don't condemn them, but I'm not having it. To me, the conflict between science and religion is more important than these issues of science education or even environmentalism. I think the world needs to wake up from its long nightmare of religious belief, and anything that we scientists can do to weaken the hold of religion should be done, and may in fact be our greatest contribution to civilization. We simply do not find anything in the laws of nature that in any way corresponds to ideas of goodness, justice, love or strife. I'm offended by the kind of smarmy religiosity that's all around us, perhaps more in America than in Europe, and not really that harmful because it's not really that intense or even that serious, but just you know, after a while, you get tired of hearing clergymen giving the invocation at various public celebrations, and you feel, haven't we outgrown all this? Do we have to listen to this? Scientific theories cannot be deduced by purely mathematical reasoning. I have a friend or had a friend now dead, Abdus Salam, a very devout Muslim, who was trying to bring science into the universities in the Gulf states, and he told me that he had a terrible time, because although they were very receptive to technology, they felt that science would be a corrosive to religious belief, and they worried about it. And damn it, I think they were right. It is corrosive of religious belief, and it's a good thing, too. The idea is to see how far one can go without supposing supernatural intervention. Known as the Anthropic Principle, which states that the laws of nature should allow the existence of intelligent beings that can ask about the laws of nature. Unfortunately, string theory has not yet led to any predictions that can be tested experimentally. And as a result, theorists, at least most of us, are keeping an open mind as to whether the theory actually applies to the real world. It is this insistence on verification that we most miss in all the poetic students of nature, from Thales to Plato, If there is no point in the universe that we discover by the methods of science, there is a point that we can give the universe by the way we live, by loving each other, by discovering things about nature, by creating works of art. And that, in a way, although we are not the stars in a cosmic drama, if the only drama we're starring in is one that we are making up as we go along, it is not entirely ignoble that faced with this unloving, impersonal universe, we make a little island of warmth and love and science and art for ourselves. That's not an entirely despicable role for us to play. <laughs>